in this video we'll see how to check whether a given function is one one or not we know by the knowledge of the types of functions what is a one one function but what if i have some questions given how would i check whether the function is one one or not so basically there are three ways to check for the same one if the graph is given second if i want to use calculus that is differentiation and the third when i want to use the definition of functions so basically we have three things and let's get started seeing it one by one so for a one one function what is the first category that we are going to see the first category would be graph when a graph is given how to check whether a function is one one or not let's see i have this graph given to me this is x axis this is y axis and i have a graph given to me on this axis x and y axis the graph is like this or the graph may be either straight line graph or a rectilinear curvilinear graph anything for the first case i take this graph which is nearly a straight line graph now how to check whether this function is one one or not the technique is very simple draw a line parallel to the x axis i draw a line parallel to the x axis now this line which is parallel to the x axis how does this cut the graph let me draw a darker line for a better reference the line should always be parallel to the x axis it cuts the graph at how many points it cuts the graph at only one point since this line which is parallel to the x axis cuts the graph at only one point so it is one one that means now we understand if we have any graph given we must we must always what do we must always draw a line parallel to the x axis if it cuts the graph at only one point it is one one whereas if it cuts the graph at more than one point it is not at all one one so let's write that draw a line parallel draw a line parallel to x axis now what do we know do if it cuts if it cuts the graph at one point if it cuts the graph at one point it is one one function if it cuts the graph at one point it is one one function so this is the first way how to check whether a function is one one or not but what if i do not have a graph given to me rather a function given to me in the form of a problematic question then how to go about solving the same let's see another technique how to find whether a function is one one or not so this is the second technique where we would be using calculus as an approach calculus is a branch of mathematics and it is related to physics you must have studied the derivative test how to find out the first derivative second derivative in your class 11th in physics as well as mathematics so we are going to use the knowledge of calculus for the same what do we have to do we always have to find out the first derivative after finding out the first derivative we have to check the monotonicity of the graph i am writing a new word for you probably some of you might know it for some of you it might be a new thing let's understand what is monotonicity so monotonicity is what it is a characteristic of any graph or any function wherein the function has the tendency to either increase or decrease strictly increase or decrease but not both so in this category of one one functions we always want our function to either decrease or increase but not both if it is so then my function is one one otherwise it is not one one 
Let's see one working problem, one example for the same and things then become clear. Suppose I have a function fx and it is given to me as x square plus x. Now we actually in plain words don't know how to find out or plot a graph for it. One thing can be done, you can take different values of x, you obtain different values of fx or y, draw a graph and then draw a line parallel to x axis, what we did in the technique 1. But what if I do not want to draw the graph, I want to solve it as a problem in mathematics using only pen. So the technique is you find f dash x. This f dash x is what? It is the first derivative. x square has the derivative as 2x plus x has the derivative as 1. Now how did we get this 2x plus 1? For this you need to apply your knowledge of derivatives. I just write a small hint for those who don't know a formula. The formula is the derivative d by dx of x raised to the power n which is equal to n x power n minus 1. Suppose I have d by dx as x square which was here. Now what do we do? We write n in the front that means 2 in the front. Then we write the variable x, we write the variable x. Then we write the power minus 1, n minus 1. What is the power 2? 2 minus 1 is 1. So 2x raised to the power 1 is 2x. That is how we got 2x. Also for x, for x what was the story? The story was simple. It was x raised to the power 1 basically. Right? Now for x raised to the power 1 what do we do? We put the power in the front which is 1 in the front. Then we write x, we wrote x, then we write the power minus 1, so it is 1 minus 1 which is 0. Now any variable raised to the power 0 is what? It is 1, so 1 into 1 is 1, this is how we got 1. So what are we going to do? We are going to write the function, we are going to find out the first derivative that is f dash x. After finding out the first derivative, you check what is the domain and codomain. Here in the function, it was written for all x belongs to real and the function was a mapping from real to real. By checking whether the function derivative is equal to 0, we can get critical points. So the first step, if I write it stepwise, so the first step would be finding the first derivative. The second step which is step 2 would be putting the first derivative equal to 0. So after step 1 we obtain step 2 which is putting the first derivative equal to 0 put f dash x equal to 0. What was the first derivative? It was 2x plus 1. Put it equal to 0 find out the value of x. What is the value of x? It is minus 1 by 2. First step what was the first step? Finding the first derivative. What was the second step? Putting the first derivative equal to 0. What is the third step? Let's see. The third step now is actually checking how this point, this critical point, this is called as a critical point. I write the word here. how this critical point actually adjusts or behavior of the function depends upon it. So when the function value has minus 1 by 2 in it and when it has greater than minus 1 by 2 and less than minus 1 by 2. So what we do is we check when it is greater than 1 by 2 and one time we check when it is less than 1 by 2. When you put it greater to 1 by 2, greater to minus 1 by 2 would be what? Something in positive maybe or 1, 2, 3, anything. So when you put it greater to minus 1 by 2 here, what do we get? Suppose you put 0, you get always a positive value. So greater to minus 1 by 2 in f dash x greater to minus 1 by 2 in f dash x would always give me a positive value. Similarly,
finally what we have to do is we have to check by putting less than minus 1 by 2 in f dash x. Less than minus 1 by 2 in f dash x means any negative value. When you put a negative value f dash x will give me negative. Now clubbing all the functions again we derive to a conclusion. We are given a function. We have to use calculus. What do we do? We find the first derivative in the first step that is plain and simple. Then second step would be putting the first derivative equal to 0 and finding one critical point. After finding that critical point, you have to actually go about less than that critical point and greater than the critical point. And then check what is the behavior of the derivative accordingly. If it is always greater than 0 or always less than 0, then it is a 1 1 function. But here, what is the story? Sometimes it is greater than 0, sometimes it is less than 0. So it is not a 1 1. Right? So we can derive and we can come to a conclusion that this was not 1 1. Why? Because sometimes it was greater than 0, sometimes it was less than. Had the story been greater than, greater than or less than, less than, it would have been a 1 1 function. Now, after these two categories of graph and using monotonicity to check whether a function is 1 1 or not, we have the third category, the third type to check whether my function is 1, 1 or not. And that third category is using fx equal to fy, using fx equal to fy if, if we get x equal to y, we have a 1, 1 function. Remember this was the definition of 1, 1 function that we did? And this would be mostly used in our all the questions that we have to use the definition that if the images are same, that means the elements must have been same. Let's see a simple example to this and then let's get started. Example would be a mapping from real to real, a mapping from real to real for a function fx equal to 2x plus 3. What do we do? We just follow the definition. We write solution. Let fx equal to fy. Let fx equal to fy. And now we have 2x plus 3 equal to 2y plus 3. Just because fx was equal to fy. 3 and 3 get cancelled from both these sides. We have 2x equal to 2y. 2 and 2 also get cancelled. We have x equal to y. Since we started from supposing fx equal to fy, we came out to the conclusion that elements are also same as the images. So it is a 1, 1 function. Hence, in this video, we saw what is 1, 1 the three categories to find what is 1 1. For those who might not be able to see this, I'll write it a bit down. We find that this function is a 1 1 function. What did we do? We basically supposed fx equal to fy. I write it clearly here. If my fx is equal to fy and I get x equal to y as a result of it, my function is a 1 1 function. If fx equal to fy and as a result I get x equal to y, my function is a 1, 1 function. So in this video we saw the three categories that if I have a graph being given which is here, if I use a calculus approach which is here and if I use the definition which is a working problem here.